Hi. We all know that the mind and the body are connected. And we also know that physical stresses create psychological symptoms. But in this film, we will explore an illness where psychological distress gets converted into physical symptoms. So let's hear more about dissociative conversion disorder from our expert. Hi. We all may have come across patients with dissociative conversion disorder while working in the casualty or emergency departments during our medical school. Such patients are often dismissed as functional illness patients because no discernible physical basis is established for the severe symptoms with which the patient lands in the emergency. The signs and symptoms involve the motor nervous system and the disease mimics neurological conditions. The patient may present with unusual or dramatic physical symptoms that have no diagnosable physical basis or any structural pathology. Symptoms may include seizures, amnesia, trance, loss of sensation, visual disturbances, paralysis, aphonia, identity confusion, or possession states. These symptoms are a way of expressing some psychological distress which the patient finds difficult to acknowledge and communicate. Or they may help the patient receive attention and care that he or she may have perceived as lacking for whatever reason. So the word conversion refers to the conversion of distress into physical symptoms, while dissociation refers to the dissociation of patient's mental functions, like memory, identity, etc. For example, in trance or possession states. While these symptoms appear to be under voluntary control, the patient is not aware of it. The patient genuinely suffers these symptoms as real. For example, Long-standing paralysis can lead to contractures. Stress and conflict often precipitate the symptoms. So, you can make a diagnosis of dissociative conversion disorder if unusual physical symptoms that mimic neurological conditions are seen in the absence of a diagnosable physical basis or structural pathology. The symptoms have a sudden onset and they may be related to psychological stress or difficult personal circumstances. Hey, this seems pretty easy to diagnose. I think a thorough physical and neurological examination can help us determine whether the nervous system is involved or not. And rest of course depends on the history of events, right? Yes, that's true. But as a physician, it is important for us to rule out physical illness before diagnosing dissociative conversion disorder. And also remember, traditional or cultural possession or trance states are not pathological. Management aims at relieving the patient of his symptoms. We must remember some basic tenets before that. Do not dismiss either the patient or the symptoms. Do not use painful stimuli. Instead, be supportive and understanding to the patient. Encourage the patient to get over the symptoms. Suggestions work well on such patients because the symptoms are under voluntary control, though the patient is not aware of it. Use problem-solving approach to help the patient sort his problems. Reduce immediate and identifiable stress for the patient. Reduce the over-concerned behavior of family members towards the patient. Counseling plays a key role in this condition. Depending on our judgment of the situation, we can decide whom to counsel first, the patient or the family. They need to understand that the symptoms can resolve rapidly without leaving any permanent damage. Patient's attention should be shifted from his 
or her symptoms by providing positive reinforcement. For example, the patient should be encouraged either by words or by actions if he or she successfully performs simple everyday tasks or engages in some productive work. Whenever symptoms occur, the patient should be left alone to recover from them. After ensuring basic safety, family should try not to overreact or get alarmed by symptoms, but should always ensure basic safety of the patient. Prolonged rest or withdrawal from activity should be discouraged. The patient should be encouraged to acknowledge and communicate stresses, problems and difficulties without having to resort to the symptoms. Medication does not play an important role in this illness. It is best to avoid anxiolytics and sedatives. In chronic cases associated with depressive symptoms, antidepressants can be used. Hey, can I come in for a minute please? Do I need to tell you that for details on antidepressants and their side effects, you can watch the film on depression in this series. Okay, and now back to the expert. Thanks for that. And the last thing I want to tell you is that you must consult a specialist if the symptoms continue for more than three months after starting the treatment. And to prevent or cure physical complications of dissociative symptoms like contractures. I hope this will help you manage such patients better next time that you come across. Good luck and goodbye. Thanks. That was really an interesting one. I enjoyed it. Anyways, if you have missed out on any points, please watch the film again. Or else, just watch any other film in this series. See you around.